Blessed Sunday, Pastor Shane here, Worship Without Walls, and I'd like to just first and foremost give a shout out to all of the father figures, all of the true patriarchs, in regards to the fathers who love unconditionally, the fathers who care unconditionally to their children and to others. I wish you a happy Father's Day, for this is a day that celebrates those acts of kindness, those caring, loving gestures, and making sure you take care of not only your own, but possibly others. With that said, on behalf of Worship Without Walls Ministry, I'd like to thank all of you for joining me here this morning for worship, for word, and for prayer. Let us pray. Through dreams and visions, O oh God, you broaden the horizon and hope of your people that they may discover the meaning of your covenant, even in the midst of trial and exile. Increase the number of those who believe in your word, so that all people may joyfully respond to your call and share in your promises. Amen and amen. We turn into our red hymnal. We're going to start with, I will be with you. This is what the Lord says, he who created you. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have summoned by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. I am the Lord your God. So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. When you call upon me, I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. We will continue forward for follow him. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them. And they follow me, and I give them eternal life, and they will never perish. Neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all, and no one is able to snatch them out of my Father's hand. Our opening hymn for today is We Walk by Faith. And as we begin to sing and worship together, my allergies 100% are kicking my butt right now. So I apologize for any off sounding. I apologize for a raspier voice. Let us begin. Gracious world we hear Of him who spoke as none are spoke But we believe in me We may not touch his hands and side Nor follow where he trod Yet in his promise we rejoice and cry, my Lord and God. Then, O oh God, 
seek where you are found. That when our life of faith is done in realms of clearer light, we may behold you as you are and full and No gracious words we hear Of him who spoke has none our spoke But we believe him near Amen Amen. We now open our blue hymnal. Please join me in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into Hades. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. And amen. <clears throat> we turn to 509. My life, my joy, my all. I will proclaim the name of the Lord. Oh, praise the greatness of our God. He is the rock. His works are perfect and all his ways are just. A faithful God who does no wrong, upright and just is he. The Lord lives. Praise be to my rock, exalted be God, the rock, my savior. I will praise you, O Lord, although you were angry with me. Your anger has turned away and you have comforted me. Surely God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. The Lord, the Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation with joy. You will draw water from the wells of salvation. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into the living hope through the resurrection of Jesus from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade, kept in heaven for you, who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. We turn now into our Bibles to our reading from Psalm for today. And our reading from Psalm comes from Psalm 1, 16, verse 1 through 2, and 12 through 19. All right, here we go. I love the Lord because he has heard my voice and my supplications. Because he has inclined his ear to me, therefore I will call upon him as long as I live. What shall I render to the Lord for all his benefits toward me? I will take up the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord now in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of, his, of the Lord is the death of his saints. O Lord, truly I am your servant. I am your servant, the son of your maidservant. You have loosened my bonds. I will offer to you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and will call upon the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord now in the presence of all his people, in the courts of the Lord's house, in the midst of you, O Jerusalem. Praise the Lord. 
Here ends our reading from the Book of Song. Thanks be to God. Our next hymn for worship is Savior Like a Shepherd Lead Us. to our first reading for today and our first reading for today comes from the book of Genesis chapter 18 verses 1 through 15 let us begin then the Lord appeared to him by the terebinth trees of Mamar as he was sitting in the tent door in the heat of the day so he lifted his eyes and looked, and behold, three men were standing by him. And when he saw them, he ran from the tent door to meet them, and bowed himself to the ground, said, My Lord, if I have now found favor in your sight, do not pass on by your servant. 
Please let the little water be brought and wash your feet and rest yourselves under the tree. And I will bring a morsel of bread that you may refresh your hearts after that you pass. Bye. Inasmuch as you have come to your servant, they said, Do as you have said. So Abraham hurried into the tent to Sarah and said, Quickly, make ready three measures of fine meal, knead it, and make cakes. And Abraham ran to the herd and took a tender of good calf, tender and good calf, gave it to the young man, and he hastened to prepare it. So he took butter and milk and the calf, which he prepared, and sent it before them. And he stood by them under the tree as well as they ate. Then they said to him, Where is Sarah your wife? So he said, Here, in the tent. And he said, I will certainly return to you according to the time of life. And behold, Sarah your wife shall have a son. Sarah was listening in the tent's door, which was behind him. Now Abraham and Sarah were old, well advanced in age, and Sarah had passed the age of childbearing. Therefore, Sarah laughed within herself, saying, After I have grown old, shall I have pleasure, my Lord, being old also? And the Lord said to Abraham, Why did Sarah laughingly say, Shall I surely bear a child since I am old? Is anything too hard for the Lord? At the appointed time, I will return to you according to the time of life, and Sarah shall have a son. But Sarah denied it, saying, I did not laugh, for she was afraid. And he said, No, but you did laugh. Here ends our scripture for the first reading. Thanks be to God. Siblings in Christ, please join me in prayer. Friends in Christ, God invites us to uphold the needs of our sisters and brothers, as dear to us as our own needs. Loving our neighbors as ourselves, we offer our thanksgivings and our petitions on behalf of the church and the world. First, I'd like to uplift those who are on our prayer list, and I'm going to go through them in no random <clears throat> order. Nick. Robin, Ace, D, Dan, Caden, Courtney, Nikki, Lennox, Max, Beth, Nora, Ray, our Pats that we keep up in prayer, Muriel, Bonnie, T, Lance, Chris, Val, Bob, Brianna, Timoth, Adam, Thomas, Rihanna, Rosie, Joy, Eve. Lord, we lift up to you all of the many followers we have on our social media platforms that you might calm their spirits, heal their souls, and heal them. For only you know what each and every one of them is in need of at this moment and this time. We lift up our siblings and our LGBTQ, IA2S plus community. We lift up to you those who are celebrating pride that they may be able to celebrate in peace and in love and not have any harm come to them. We look to you, Lord, that you would help open the eyes and ears of those who would be spreading hate in your name. That you might comfort them and show them the true way of what it is they are supposed to be doing here on earth, bringing your heaven to earth. For it is here on earth as it is in heaven. Lord, we lift up our sick friends and family that you might lay your healing hands upon them. We lift up to you those who battle day in and day out with mental health. 
problems. That they may have that strength to move forward, to beat that addiction, to beat that depression, that anxiety. That, Lord, you would help them through even the more severe mental illnesses and guide them in strength and in light. And ultimately, Lord, we lift up this ministry to you, that you would continue to guide us and strengthen us, that you would continue to be there for us as we continue to proclaim your good news and your word, your truth, your light, your love to the world. We lift up this family, Lord, because that is what we are. We are one family in your name. We ask that you hear our prayers, God of power, and through this ministry of your Son, free us from the grip of the tomb, that we may desire you as the fullness of life and proclaim your saving deeds into the world. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Our next hymn is Blessed Assurance. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God. Born of His Spirit and washed in His blood. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, perfect delight, visions of rapture now burst in my sight. Angels descending, bring from above, echoes of mercy, <coughs> whispers of love. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, we're praising my <clears throat> Savior all the day long. Submission, all is at rest. Yea, in my Savior, I'm happy and blessed. Watching and waiting, looking above, filled with His goodness and lost in His love. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, 
This is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Praising my Savior all the day long. <clears throat> amen and amen. Let us turn to our blue hymnal. Six seventy four dedicated service. I appeal to you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that you may prove that it is will of God what is good and acceptable and perfect. For by the grace given to him, or to me, by <clears throat> I bid every one among you not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith which God has assigned him. For as in one body we have many members, and all the members do not have the same function, so we though many are one body in Christ and individually members of one body and one another. Let love be genuine, hate what is evil, hold fast to what is good. Love one another with brotherly affection, outdo one another in showing honor. Never flag in zeal, be aglow with the spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in your hope, be patient in tribulation, be constant in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints. Practice hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in memory, in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty. Be associate, but associate with the lowly. Never be conceited. Repay no one evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If possible, so far as it depends upon you, live peaceably with all. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. We now will turn to our second reading. And our second reading comes from the book of Romans. Chapter 5, verses 1 through 8. Let us begin. Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom also we have access by faith into this grace, in which we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only that, but we also glory in tribulation, knowing that tribulation produces perseverance, and perseverance, character, and character, hope. Now hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out into our hearts by the Holy Spirit who has given, who has given to us. For when we were still without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet perhaps for a good man someone would even dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love toward us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Here ends our second reading. Pray, siblings in Christ, please join me for the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, leading us not to temptation, but delivering us from evil. For thine is the kingdom of power and glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us continue in prayer, siblings in Christ. Mighty God, with your powerful arms, hold up your church. 
We are struggling through tough times in our churches. We need to be renewed again and filled with your power. Reach inside us and open hearts wide that we might give the full measure of our devotion. As you revive the saints who came before us, revive us to go out and welcome the forgotten. Heal the sick. Speak the words of comfort and hope to the discouraged. In the holy name of Christ we pray. Amen and amen. And siblings in Christ, if you feel compelled to tithe with this ministry, you can click on our About Us. You can click on our link tree and you can find multiple ways through that page that you can tithe with this ministry. We turn now to our gospel reading for today. And our gospel comes from the gospel of Matthew, the ninth chapter, verse 35. Verses chapter 10, verse 8. <clears throat> then Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion for them, because they were weary and scattered, like sheep having no shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest truly is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray to the pray the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. And when he had called his twelve disciples to him, he gave them power over unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease. Now the names of the twelve apostles are these, first Simon, who was called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector, James, the son of Alphaeus, and Libius, whose surname was Thaddeus, Simon, the Canaanite, and Judas Isca Iscariot who was also betrayed him. These 12 Jesus sent out and commanded them saying, do not go into the way of the Gentiles and do not enter a city of, a Samarit of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as you go, preach saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons, Freely you have received, freely you give. Provide neither gold nor silver nor copper in your money belts, nor bag for your journey, nor two tunics, nor sandals, nor staffs. For a worker is worthy of his food. Now whatever city or town you enter, inquire. Within it is worthy. And stay there, and stay there till you go out. And when you go into a household, greet it. If that household is worthy, let your peace come upon it. But if it is not worthy, let your peace return to you. And whoever will not receive you, nor hear your words, when you <clears throat> depart from that house or city, shake off the dust from your feet. Assuredly, I say to you, it will be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than for that city. Behold, I send you out as sheep in the midst of wolves. Therefore, be wise as serpents and harmless as doves. But beware of men, for they will deliver you up to councils and scourge you in their synagogues. You will be brought before governors and kings for my sake as <clears throat> a testimony to them and to the Gentiles. But when they deliver you up, do not worry about how or what you should speak, for it will be given to you in that hour, and you should speak. For it is not you who speak, but the Spirit of your Father who speaks in you. 
Now, brother, will deliver up brother to death, and father his child, and child will rise up against parents and cause them to be put to death. And you will be hated by all for my name's sake. But he who endures to the end will be saved. When they persecute you in the city, flee to another. For as assuredly as I say to you, you will not have gone through the cities of Israel before the Son of Man comes. A disciple is not above his teacher, nor servant above his master. Here ends our scripture reading from the Gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God. And thanks be to our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, siblings in Christ, we did read a little bit longer into that. It was an optional. We could read through verse 23. So we did continue reading on in the Gospel of Matthew today. And that is okay. Because we get to our <clears throat> um, message for this morning. Our message comes out of that Gospel reading. And that Gospel reading ultimately upholds reading as far into it as we ch so choose this morning. <clears throat> our message for this morning is entitled share the news and when we think about news what do we think about in today's world we think about newspapers we think about magazine articles we think about putting on the tv right and how many news stations we have out there but today's day and age is not just a matter about tv like our parents day and age right it's not just a matter of newspaper or articles. And again, when I say parents' day and age, I'm looking at my parents' day and age and their parents' day and age. And even before that, as we go back in history, like how news and is transferred back and forth ultimately has increased in speed, right? It has increased in timeliness. It has increased on being almost at our fingertips because it is at our fingertips nowadays because news being dispersed now in my day and age as a preacher and in the day and age of my children comes at the click of a button we can go on google and google something right we can sit there on our social media apps and we have things come through of news articles that friends and family have shared but with that said, I only ask that you be a little discerning on the types of news articles and sources that you are getting it from because we know nowadays that when we see news, there are two different types of sources. And in a lot of cases, that was the case back throughout history as well. We have our reliable sources and we have our unreliable sources. And ultimately, in the middle of that, we have that gray area of sources where not that the news might not be reliable, but we have to look at it through the lens now in a political situation of which party does that news network support? What are they truly saying? Who are they truly honoring or giving to in those cases, right? And that just muddies the water when it comes to what to believe and what not to believe. And you have those people, and I'm sure we all have someone like that in our lives that is per se, a die-hard absorber of the news given by a set media network. And no matter what is said anywhere else, no matter what law studies, no matter anything that could be on contraire, that could be opposite to what is said from that, they're not going to believe it. It's going to be false because it didn't come from their source. And this is where I say we have to be discerning. We look to God for the ability to be discerning, right? Because we want to be able to ultimately have the truth and the knowledge to give. We don't want to hide behind our insecurities. We don't want to hide behind false precepts. We don't want to hide behind the things that ultimately cause harm to us and others which ultimately fall from a point of almost ignorance. 
But instead, we want to be strong within the truth. And that's why we look to the Lord for the truth, right? We say, Lord, open our eyes to see and our hearts to love and our ears to listen. May we be quick to listen, but slow to speak and slow to anger. And in today's day and age, we need that ability to be slow to speak and slow to anger. I know in many times I, in the past, I would be quick to throw back a quick comment. And yet, as time goes on, I'm more and more reluctant to throw back a quick comment, but ultimately be slow to speak, quick to discern and think about the responses before I give a response. And yet we see in today's gospel, ultimately what Christ is doing is Christ is trying to spread that good news, right? We see in today's gospel, Christ talk about not only what he was doing, because Christ went about, right? We started off seeing right in the beginning that Christ went all about to the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing the sick and disease among the people. But what happened? Christ saw the multitude who needed Christ in their life. Christ saw the multitude of lost sheep that needed to hear the truth, that needed to understand the love. So Christ sat there and pulled and talked about the harvest being truly plentiful. But there weren't enough laborers to go forth. Now what does this mean? Now we know when we look at things from a farming standpoint or things even in the news today. We see in places such as Florida. Where there's not enough laborers to complete the work that's being done ultimately, in my opinion, no fault of their own by making laws that ultimately cast out fear. And due to that fear, the laborers left. But I digress. I was just bringing that up because that is partial news. Christ in our gospel today is saying there weren't enough laborers to go forth and to do this. So in counter to that, Christ blesses the disciples. Christ gives dominion over the disciples through the Spirit to go forth and be able to cast out demons, heal the sick, and do it in Jesus' name. But we sit there and we get a taste of who those disciples were. Because in chapter 10, it says the 12 apostles, and the 12 apostles are as follows. We have Simon, who was called Peter, we have Andrew, his brother, we have James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother. We have Philip and Bartholomew. We have Thomas, Matthew, the tax collector, James, the son of Alphaeus and Lebaeus. And we have Simon, the Canaanite, and Judas Iscariot, who also betrayed Christ. Judas was also sent out as one of those initial twelve, right? But from there, we continue forth. And Christ then instructs them to go forth and preach the good news. Christ is instructing them to share the love and the compassion. And to call these hurting sheep back. To let them know that the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And now siblings, we are also called to do the same thing. And I can sugarcoat things, but it's not typically my style. So to be blunt, 
we have ultimately in this country alone, I would say two forms of Christianity. We have one side that wants to sit there and ultimately just tell people left and right that they're wolves in sheep clothing and that they're going to hell and that they're they need to set themselves right in the yada yadas which i'm sure we've all heard it's the same yada yadas from the people that ultimately turn people away from the church which then turns people away from jesus and as a preacher i look to you and say you don't have to leave a building you don't have to leave Jesus just because you left a building. That's what I was trying to say. There we go. Because you can still have that relationship with Jesus, but not be part of that building that has this style of Christianity. And I know that there are a lot of Christians out there that would probably sit there from this side and say, you're a false preacher because you're saying there's two forms of Christianity. But there is because there is the loving, affirming, and accepting side which ultimately truly acts on the statement all are welcome and then there's the side that really just wants to say that you know we, we say all are welcome but when you get in the walls of our building we're going to make you realize that only those that look act and believe the exact same way as us are really the only ones that we're saying are welcome to come in and you could say Pastor, how do you know this? And I would respond wholeheartedly because I've experienced it. I've experienced this toxic side of Christianity over and over and over and over again. The toxic form that leads to indoctrinating through fear, through you, through other forms of control because if you make someone feel less of themselves then ultimately you bring forth the power to control them and that's not in my opinion what we are supposed to do as Christians and I say that as my opinion because as my understanding of what the gospel has taught us what Jesus is telling us and what Jesus is even saying here for us to do in sharing the news of the kingdom of heaven coming at hand. Because again, it is as here on earth as it is in heaven. It is not, we are just going to sit there and condemn everybody and tell them to repent for their sins and tell them that they're going to hell if they don't and tell them that they are worthless. We are not going to continue to fear tactic in hopes that by fear tacticing, we've brought enough people in to manipulate into doing the exact same thing because ultimately all that does is spread fear, spread hate. And we don't need fear and hate spread anymore in this country, in this world, do we? No. But what we do need spread is love. We need love. And I'm going to turn real quick to our scripture from the book of Romans today. And I want to reread part of it. The first thing I want to reread is saying, Having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we also have access by faith into the grace in which we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only that, but also the glory in tribulations, knowing that tribulation produces perseverance. So here we are seeing in Romans that we all have to face a trial or a tribulation, right? And that tribulations lead to perseverance. And perseverance. Character. So as we go through this tribulation and we have this perseverance to move forward and move strong, which is ultimately what Christ is asking the disciples to go forth and do as we are sharing the news, right? So as we're going to be true followers of Christ and we're going to share 
the truth of light and love to this world. We're going to face those tribulations and then we're going to get perseverance for doing so, right? Because we're going to want to win that race. We're going to want to see that ending. And we're going to get that character. Maybe it's that tougher skin. Maybe it's that armor of God protecting us. And from character, we're going to get hope, right? And part of this ministry is to bring hope to those, right? Out there in need. Hope to those who are being persecuted. Hope to those who are being marginalized. Hope to those who have faced this type of Christianity, the type that wants to just tell you you're not good enough and tell you because you're not good enough, we're going to sit there and we're going to change you and make you good enough in the way that we believe. The same type of Christianity that, to be blunt and honest, is the type of Christianity that harbors those that perform S.A., And acts like that against children and people of the opposite sex. Because ultimately it's that same dominant masculinity patriarch in that form of Christianity that is going to say that anything other than the male, and the, not all males, but the highest level of male is subservient. It almost dehumanizes the rest. And that's not okay because we all are human. We all matter. But let me, I digress. Let me get back into this. It says, now hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who is given to us. So when we get to that point of hope, right? We get to that point of being hopeful for the truth, hopeful for the light and hopeful for better things to come. It doesn't disappoint because the love of the Lord and the love of God has been poured out through the Holy Spirit into that and into us. So our hope is justified through love. Through love. And I want to pull out our hymnal again because I want to reread some of the parts of our hymnal. And there's a few parts that I want to reread. It said, the first one I want to start off with says, Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Many will sit there and see a preacher who, although we practice differently on religious spectrums, will sit there and still welcome someone from another faith, someone from another religion. And we would get persecuted for welcoming them. But it's not our job to persecute them, and they are really not our enemies. They're our brothers or sisters. Because ultimately, if we truly believe in what God says, everyone is God's creation. Even those on this side of Christianity are still God's creation, and we are not supposed to persecute them, but we are supposed to welcome them. I'm hopeful that we can plant that seed of hope within them. That seed of hope turning into seed of love and turning into seed of compassion for thy brother, thy sister, thy neighbor, thy sibling. Okay? We continue forth saying, Rejoice with those who rejoice, weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Never be conceited. Which means humble yourself. We are not supposed to put ourselves on a pedestal and say we are better than anyone. We are supposed to associate with everyone. That is what we are guided to do. And then it says, and goes forth and says, Repay no evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all, if possible so far as it depends upon you to live peaceably with all. Now, a lot of that comes into self-reflection because how can you be peaceable, peaceable with all if you can't self-reflect and can't better yourself? But the problem is, instead of looking at the things from the lens of being peaceable with all, when we share the news, we look at it of sharing the news only on our stance. And I'm not saying that another stance doesn't have some truths within it. I'm not. And it's not my place to judge. That is only one person's place to judge but I will fall every day on my cross 
to spread light and love to this world through Jesus Christ. I will fall on my cross to not sit there and spread fear and hate. And if that's the cross that I fall on and it's wrong, then at least I fell on something to bring betterness to the world, to bring love to the world, to bring kindness to the world. And the last part that I wanted to bring up, it says, but do, it says, do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. And when we think of things that are evil, we think of fear as evil. We think of hate as evil. And if those things are in your heart, those things led by what I would consider an indoctrinated hierarchy, it's not too late to change them. Look to the Lord to embrace and open your heart to love all mankind. Open your heart to love all of your fellow siblings in Christ and God. Open your heart to share the good news. We all can be Saul and turn into Paul and spread the news of Jesus Christ and love and light to this world. We all have the ability to be called upon to go forth and spread the good news. But how can we share the news if our heart is full of things that lead to anger and hate? Things like racism. Things like the test for something as simple as what a rainbow might stand for. Something as simple as what a flag might stand for. And to think that we would then raise our flags or they would then raise their flags and say that they're doing it in the name of Jesus or doing it in the name of God. And that, I just don't understand. I just don't get because if we read the red letters, if we look at the gospel, if we look at the things that Christ taught us, there is nothing in my eyes of sharing the news that involves hate and fear. There is nothing involved of making someone feel less than human. There is nothing involved in treating someone as if they are less than human, less than God's creation. And if your religion's telling you that, then they're not telling you the truths of the gospel. They're not telling you the truths of Jesus Christ. So siblings, I commend you and ask you to go forth in your day to continue to share the news just as Christ sent forth the first apostles. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we come to you today as nothing but humble servants. We look to you for your continued guidance, your discernment, your strength, so we may continue to go forth spreading your good news, spreading your light, spreading your love, and ultimately bringing forth hope to this world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and Amen. Our final hymn for service is Here I Am, Lord.
the stars of night. I will make their darkness bright. Who will bear my light to them? Whom shall I send? Here I am, Lord. Is it I, Lord? I have heard you calling in the night. And I will go, Lord, if you lead me, I will hold your people in my heart. I, the Lord of wind and flame, I will send the poor and lame. I will set a feast for them, my hand will save. Finest bread I will provide, till their hearts be satisfied. I will give my life to them. Whom shall I send? Here I am, Lord. Is it I, Lord? I have heard you If you lead me, I will hold your people in my heart. I will hold your people in my heart. Let us pray. God of compassion, you have opened the way for us and brought us to yourself. Pour your love into our hearts that overflowing with joy, we may freely share the blessings of your realm and faithfully proclaim the good news of Christ our Lord. Amen and amen. And now, siblings in Christ, May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord turn his face to you and grant you peace. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. Faithful siblings, go in peace. Amen and amen.